Hello, Acceleration Nation, and welcome to another Sick Career Podcast. This is another solo episode with me as we're queuing up more episodes with some great guests. If you have ideas for guests, always shoot me an email at alanacademiacareers.com. We will get them booked for you. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the fundamental framework that has worked for me 29 different times to get a job and has worked for hundreds of clients of mine to get jobs quickly, confidently, and with lots more money. And I love acronyms and I have labeled this framework the growth framework. We've actually got a copyright on it as well. So the growth framework is an essential framework that will help you get more interviews get more offers, and get more money. If anyone has heard of Stephen Covey or read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, habit number one is to be proactive, and that is critical for any great job search. But habit number two is start with the end in mind, or start with the start with the end first. So really understand your goals, and that is critical for the growth framework. So Before I have started on any job search, when I work with my clients on their job search, it's really important to understand their values, what's important to them, and what is important to you in your next job. Once you get those values set, the next step is to identify organizations, companies, academic institutions, whatever the hell it is that you are pursuing, places that can help you achieve that goal. And it's important to create a list and that list should be 40 deep. I did not come up with the number 40 by just pulling it out of thin air. That was something that was taught to me back in business school when I went to business school 19 years ago in 2005. And I'm giving you that information now for free. So start with a list of 40 companies. If you're having a hard time coming up with that list of 40 companies, just go to our website at kademacareers.com. You can find a curated list of top 100 companies to start with and start with those companies, start with those organizations that will help you achieve your goals. So that is a G in the growth framework. R, R stands for reality and realistically assessing your strengths. There's a great episode of Seinfeld when George Costanza, played by Jason Alexander, who is actually based on Larry David, who co-wrote the show, quit his job uh, as a real estate agent and then was looking for his next role. And he's talking to his buddy, Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, who the show is named after, and discussing what sort of job George should pursue next. And George tells Jerry, well, you know what? What about being a baseball announcer? Well, Jerry responds to to George, you know what? You kind of need to be an ex-baseball player or you kind of have to be an announcer before. And George is like, well, I make all those witty comments during the baseball game. That ain't good enough. You need to play to your strengths. So you need to realistically assess what you're strong at, whether you've done product management before, stick with product management. If you've done sales before, stick with sales. Or if you have some functional expertise in pharmaceutical industry or in consumer packaged good or academic institutions or sports, stick to something that you are strong at that you can realistically leverage and play to your strengths. Because as you try to get a job at one of those 40 companies, that hiring manager doesn't give a crap about what you want to do. They care about what you have done and what your strengths are. And when you play to your strengths, it will make those interviews and those opportunities so much easier for you to achieve. doesn't mean that you can't pivot, that you can't change, but when you're looking for a new job, you want to stick to your strengths and leverage your strengths. So that's number two, realistically leverage your strengths. The O of the growth framework stands for outreach. And this is the most critical aspect of the entire growth framework. It is important for you, whether you are an introvert, whether you are an extrovert, whether you are ambivert, which is the name of someone who kind of switches between introvert and extrovert, which I would call myself. Sometimes I love being with people, but often I just love hanging out at home, watching baseball. But regardless of if you're an introvert or an extrovert, it is really important that you build relationships in an authentic and effective and efficient, mutually beneficial way ideally at those organizations where you want to work. And there's ways to do that. We will dig deeper into that. 
when we go into the episode on outreach. If you need people to advocate and vouch for you, 24 out of my 29 jobs in my career came specifically because someone put in a kind word on my behalf. It didn't mean I need, didn't need to interview, but it opened the door. It got me considered for the role. So the third part is outreach. It helps you build relationships. It helps you gain advocacy. It helps you learn about the organizations where you will eventually interview at. The fourth part is work the system. You need to know how the game is played. You need to understand how the job search works. You need to understand how to get in front of a human being. There are three primary ways to get considered by a human being. One, you can cold apply to a job. And if you're applying at the right place, at the right time, for the right sort of roles, your resume may get pulled out of the pile of hundreds or thousands of competitors. The next way that you can be considered for a job of working this system is if someone recruits you, if someone reaches out to you on LinkedIn via email because you happen to work at the companies that they're looking to target, the job roles that they're looking to target, or the schools that they're looking to target, so you might get recruited. The third primary way to get considered for a job is through referrals. So referrals are a channel that only 7% of people utilize, but 40% of hires are hired from. So that is why so much of the growth framework really relies on that outreach and building those relationships. So if you know how the game is played, if you work this system, you will get those applications in cold at the right place, at the right time, for the right sort of roles that are leveraging your strength. Any inbound, any time you're recruited, take those interviews. It will give you practice. But the lion's share of your work should be proactive and should be earning those referrals that will get you to the front of the line to speak to a human being. So that's how you work this system. You do that over and over again. The fifth part of the growth framework is what I call training and tenacity for the interviews. So interviews are inefficient. They are unfair. They are biased, but they are very predictable. So you need to train and prepare for those interviews where the first stage of every interview is with the recruiter. The recruiter is looking for knockout factors, looking to knock you out of the system. You don't want them to do that. So you don't want to give them a compensation that's out of range. You want to make sure that you can communicate to them why you can do the job on the job, that you can do the requirements that the job is asking you to do that you are open to the location. So you need to get past that recruiter screen. It's usually a 30 minute conversation. And then if you get past the recruiter, the next step is the hiring manager. The hiring manager interview is typically 45 to 60 minutes. The hiring manager is assessing two primary things. One, can you do the job that I have opened here that I need you to do? And two, can I manage you because I'm going to be your boss? If you get past the hiring manager, congratulations. You might get invited to on-sites, you might get invited to a virtual interview, sometimes called panel interviews, sometimes called the loops. You will get there, and those interviews are usually a series of behavioral-based interviewing where you answer questions with the STAR method, situation, task, action, result. And we'll get into that when we get into the episode about training and tenacity, but you need to be able to train and have tenacity for these interviews. And when I say tenacity, I mean tenacity. Last time I interviewed for a job, I applied to 300 jobs. I got interviewed at 47 of them. I got to the final round of 20 of them. I got five offers. But that means 295 out of those 300 times, I got rejected, ignored, ghosted. And frankly, 165 of those 300 times that I applied back in 2021, I still have yet to receive a response from those companies. So you need to have that tenacity. You need to be able to take that shot, be okay with rejection, and shake it off. That is training and tenacity, the T of the growth framework. And the final part of the growth framework, and it's intentionally left final, is high impact negotiation. It is critical for you not to discuss compensation, not to be distracted by compensation until the very end, until you receive that offer. When you receive that offer, all of a sudden you have leverage, you have hand in that situation because that company is telling you that they want to hire you. And at that point, that number that they tell you is the bottom starting point 
and you can only negotiate higher from there. So that is when high impact negotiation takes place and you need to understand what your BAPNA is, your best alternative to a negotiated agreement. You need to understand what your reservation price is when you are going to walk away from the offer. And you need to think about that and you need to negotiate in a polite, humble, educated way. And we'll go into that more when we talk more deeply about high impact negotiations. So what you heard today is a high level overview of the growth framework. And again, G is goals, setting those goals ahead of the game, because if you don't know where you're going, it's damn hard to get there. Second, realistically assessing your strengths, knowing what your strengths are, playing to those strengths, leaning into those strengths. Three, outreach, building those relationships, building those authentic, mutually beneficial relationships that will open doors for you. Fourth, working the system, knowing how the game is played, getting your application in quickly at the right time, ideally through referrals. Fifth, training and tenacity for interviews that will be painful, that will lead to more rejection than acceptance, but you need to shake that off because all you need is one better opportunity. And sixth, high impact negotiation. Once you get the offer, get more. So that's what I have for you in today's episode. This is the whole framework that we teach at Kadima. I revealed the whole framework here, the whole blueprint here. You can learn more if you attend one of our upcoming live workshops. You can also learn how to implement this by purchasing our job acquisition method course, which goes into this in depth with eight hours of video. You'll hear a lot more of me and other guests on the video, or you can work with me on a one-to-one -one basis and you can reach out on our website at kadimacareers.com and find out how to get one of the 10 spots of working with me on a one-to-one -one basis where we will implement this growth framework to get you more interviews, to get you more offers, and to get you more money quickly and confidently. So hope you appreciated this episode. This is another solo one. I like doing the episodes more with guests. We will be having more guests coming up, but this episode is something that people ask me all the time. They're like, how do you implement your system? How do you leverage the system to get more interviews, more offers, more money? And it's all about applying the growth framework. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I really appreciate everybody that supports me and Kadima Careers on LinkedIn. And what would really be awesome, what I would really appreciate is if you can rate and review this episode, share it with other people that might be interested in accelerating their career. And finally, I'll leave you with the same three words I always share with people, own your career. Thanks a lot. Yeah.